In this video, we're going to look at how you can determine the center of gravity in an S-frame model. And we want to illustrate that this is quite an easy process, and then you create a copy of load cases and perform three simple calculations. And we'll look at how you can actually verify the information that you get from these calculations. Now why you might want to do this? Well, you might want to determine the center of gravity to help evaluate your model's weight distribution. For example, your model stability to lateral loads is going to be higher with a lower center of gravity. The example model that I'm going to be using is a four-story structure. It's made of steel, uh, so we have different sections for the beams. We have a W530 by 123 section for the beams. And for the columns, we have a W410 by 85 section. And you can get an idea for the dimensions. It's 20 meters wide, 27.5 uh, meters long, and 16 meters high. And the self-weight of this structure is 1,644 kilonewtons. So let's first go into S-Frame, and we'll just look at how we can set the model up to help with this process. So this model set up just like you would any other structure that you're going to analyze, especially if you've already got your self-weight loads created. There's not really too much more to do beyond that. So I've got all my sections defined. I've got my supports defined. It's essentially ready to go for analysis. If I look at my loads, I've got my self-weight vertical load case, which I would normally just call self-weight, but I want to distinguish the two for the sake of this video. And the self-weight vertical load case would be your typical self-weight load case where we have a gravitational factor in the z-axis of negative one. And accompanying that, we have a self-weight horizontal load case. And the only difference between this and the other is that this one here is taking that gravitational factor, so we no longer have a gravitational factor in the z-axis, but we now have it in the x-axis. So it's considering the weight of the structure being applied in the lateral direction. It doesn't have to be x necessarily. It could be y, but it should be one of the two lateral axes. So now at this stage, I could run the analysis. So I'm going to go Analyze, and I'm going to run a linear static analysis. And we should get a clean solution. And the first thing I want to do is I want to look at the results. So here I'm going to look at the reaction loads. I'll look at the reaction tool. And I can see that I'm getting reactions in the shear z direction of 1644 kilonewtons, which matches the self-weight uh, that I discussed earlier. I'm also getting some moment x and moment y. Now it's worth mentioning that these are taken about the global coordinate system origin. And something I haven't touched on yet is that the global coordinate system origin is at the base of my column right here. You can see where the x, y, and z arrows come from. That's important to keep in mind. Now these reactions that I'm showing, I'll show the FZ, these are related to the vertical self-weight, the one that we would normally use. However, if I want to look at the self-weight in the horizontal direction, I'll be able to see the same thing, but just for understanding, we get our shear Z that was formerly the gravity forces in the Z axis, the vertical axis, are now being applied in the X axis, so they're being resisted by the reactions in the X axis. And we have moments about the Y and Z axis accompanying that. Now let's go back into the slideshow for a second. I want to explain how we can use that information to calculate our center of gravity. First of all, we know that our self-weight of the vertical reaction is equal to W. We'll call it W here. The moment about the x-axis, if we're looking at the vertical self-weight load case, equals to W times the Y lever arm. And we can isolate y and determine that that y lever arm is equal to mx times the, uh, divided by w. And that y lever arm is just basically the center of gravity in the y-axis and what we would multiply the weight by in order to determine that moment about that x-axis. And we can do the same thing in the y-axis. We just have to keep in mind the signs that are being used. So we get negative my equals w times x with the x lever arm. And isolating x, we get x equals negative my divided by w. And this is all using the vertical self-weight load case. Now to determine z, we would have our self-weight applied in the lateral direction in this scenario. And we would want to look at the my reactions due to that self-weight in the lateral direction, which is equal to w times z, our z lever arm. And if we isolate z, we find that z equals negative my divided by w. 
So let's go into this in a little bit more detail within the S-Frame model. I'm going to go back into the self-weight vertical reaction here. And we can see here that we have our shear Z, which equals W. And to determine what our actual Y lever arm is, we'll start with Y. That would be the MX value from this load case, self-weight vertical, divided by shear Z, which is W. So 22609 divided by 1644. And to determine the X lever arm, that would equal the negative of this moment about the Y axis, which happens to be negative already, divided by shear Z or W. So that is negative, or I guess it would cancel out, so it would be positive 1644 kilonewton meters divided by 1644 kilonewtons. Now to determine, excuse me, to determine our Z lever arm, basically the vertical location of our center of gravity, we would need to switch to the horizontal self-weight load case. Our W value doesn't change, but now we're going to look at the Z lever arm being the negative of the MY moment, which again is also a negative value, so it cancels out, divided by the W value, 1644. So that would equal to 15,645 divided by 1644. And if we go back into our slides again, we can verify these values that we determined. And just to recap, our calculated center of gravity in the x-axis, the lever arm would be 10 meters. The y-axis would be 13.75 meters. And the z-axis would be 9.51 meters. And knowing this center of gravity, to verify the location is correct, what we could do is we could take our existing model and translate it. So we would translate it so that the center of gravity that we've calculated here is located at the origin of the coordinate system. We then rerun the analysis and review the moment reactions, which should be pretty much zero kilonewton meters. So with this model here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save it as a new copy, just to help me verify that what I calculated was correct. And I'm just going to move it. I'm going to translate this model so that the location of the center of gravity is coinciding with the origin of this global coordinate system. So I'm going to go back to the geometry window here and go to the edit menu, move, and I have the option to translate. And I'm just going to enter the negative values of my center of gravity locations or the lever arms. So in the x-axis that's negative 10 meters, y-axis is negative 13.75 meters, and the z-axis is negative 9.51 meters. I'll click OK. And now we can see where our center of gravity is located. It's right at this crosshair of the global coordinate system. Now all of my loads should be applied in such a way that the moments caused by the locations or the lever arms relative to this global coordinate system should equal zero. And I can verify that by just running another analysis. And once the analysis is completed here, I'm just going to look at my self-weight load case here, and the reactions tool will be able to show me here that the moments about the x, y, and z axis are all zero, which is exactly what I was hoping to achieve. So this helps me confirm that the center of gravity calculation was done correctly. Now it's worth noting that if you had other loads you wanted to include with the center of gravity calculation, maybe some external equipment load or something like that, you could repeat the same process, but keep in mind it wouldn't just be self-weight that you would be having to now apply in the vertical and the horizontal directions in two separate loading scenarios. You'd have to do that with your equipment load or whatever external load that is. You'd have to make sure that it's applied in the gravity direction as well as in uh, the lateral direction of your choosing.